Well, I make that more or less 5.30. Maybe it's a minute early, but I'm really excited. So I'm going to get started and I'm going to first of all check that you guys can hear me and see me okay. Let me know in the chat. Loud and clear, woohoo! Can see and hear. And Stuart is enthusiasmat. I'm so happy that you're excited as well. <laughs> right, so first hurdle is over. You can all see me, you can all hear me. Um, there's loads of you saying hi, this is really exciting. Um, if I look down here, I can see and hear your um, chats. So that's awesome. I'm just going to adjust my blind a little bit in my office because. The sun is beautiful and shiny here in Lisbon, so it's on my face a little bit. Um, so first of all, welcome. Hi, thank you so much for joining me um, for this very first YouTube live lesson. Um, some of you might already know me from my videos that I've been doing on YouTube um, in the last month or so. I've started publishing one every Tuesday. Um, and that's been really, really fun. Um, and I've been trying to mainly focus on um, like real life Portuguese, um, which you might not necessarily get taught um, in class. Um, so that's been really fun. So yeah, I'm a Portuguese teacher based in Lisbon. Um, and of course, with this whole lockdown situation, um, I've moved all my lessons um, online. And so I really wanted to start do and do something like fun and free that would keep you guys a bit entertained and also helping your, your Portuguese journey continue. So if I look down, it's only because I'm looking at your comments. <laughs> so um, if you have questions as we go along, um, you can pop those in the chat. And I'll do my best to address them and keep checking. Um, I'll probably check like every 10 minutes or so um, to see uh, what you guys are saying. Because obviously I want to interact with you guys as much as possible as well. Um, and that's it really. What should we... Should we get started? I think we should. So, I wanted to talk today about a few common mistakes that my students make over and over again. First of all, because I wanted to do something that was quite accessible for everybody, no matter what your level of Portuguese is. That's actually a really good thing you could let me know in the comments, like how long you've been studying, um, you know, what kind of level you're at. Um, so hopefully this, this little lesson will be suitable for all levels because um, these are mistakes that no matter how advanced my students are they make they still make these mistakes um, and I'm guilty of some of them as well when we come on to talking about prepositions um, I share your pain with that because um, that's another thing to mention I'm not actually Portuguese I'm English um, I started studying Portuguese 15 years ago now um, so it's, it's quite interesting to actually teach from the perspective of somebody who's gone through this and who's learnt, you know, the language from scratch themselves because um, I still trip up on, on the odd thing here and there. So it really helps me, you know, think to you guys, you know, what is it maybe that you're, you're struggling with? Um, oh, somebody has, here has said that they have a degree in Brazilian language and literature um, but still struggle with European Portuguese. You're not alone. It's <laughs> it is more difficult to master, um, particularly the pronunciation um, and the uh, the grammar as well. Like people often equate Brazilian Portuguese and, and European Portuguese with American English and British English, but it, I don't think that's that's enough. Like I think the difference is much much bigger um, because grammatically there are quite a lot of things that the Brazilians will do different. So. I feel your pain um, because I lived in Brazil as well. Uh, so yeah, I, when I kind of go back and forth to each country, I have to reprogram my brain a bit to um, think about that. So let's get to the presentation now, which hopefully you can see. This is very simple because I must say I did spend a good chunk of yesterday working out how YouTube Live works. <laughs> Uh, and I got there in the end, which is good. Um, you can all hear me and see me, that's good. Um, so yeah, my presentation is very simple, just the words that you need to know on the screen. 
So the first thing I wanted to talk about was pronunciation because European Portuguese is quite different and the sounds that you need to make are quite difficult, um, especially for native English speakers, um, because there are a lot of sounds that we just simply don't have. So the first one I wanted to bring up was mush, which is on the left hand side, mush, which is the word for but, and the word mais. Now the reason this keeps coming up, my students, whenever we're doing conversation practice, Whenever they want to say but, they say mais. Now I know why this is, it's because this is what Duolingo teaches you. <laughs> because unfortunately Duolingo doesn't have a European Portuguese um, option yet. They promised me that they're gonna get it. Um, but yeah, for now, when you're learning with Duolingo, it's an amazing app, um, uh, you know, really, really great for picking up vocabulary and getting started. But the pronunciation is all Brazilian Portuguese. And the Brazilians, when they say but, they do say mais, okay? However, if um, you're saying mais in European Portuguese, you're saying the one on the right-hand side, M-A-I-S, which means more, okay? So the difference is mais and mais. So when you're saying but, try really hard to say mais. Quero mais chocolate. I want more chocolate. Mais não quero engordar, for example. I want more chocolate, but I don't want to get fat. Okay, so they're two quite distinct sounds, um, and this is one that I hear over and over again. So just really try and drill that one in. It's not mais, it's mais. Okay. The next one. Where are we with the next one? I went forward to. Okay, so bom, <laughs> B-O-M, okay, which we all know means good. So if you're saying good day, bom dia. But the pronunciation here is tricky, okay? We're not saying bom, like the one on the right hand side, like a ticking time bom. No, when a word ends in M, we have to nasalize the vowel that goes before it, okay? So B-O-M, I'm not going to pronounce the M at the end, that's what this rule is. Instead, I have to nasalize the O. So instead of an O, O, I'm going to use my nose as well, push some air out of my nose at the same time and say O, O. You feel really ridiculous doing it at the beginning, but as you practice it will get easier, okay? So instead of saying bomb, you're going to say Bon. Okay, not bomb with an M at the end. That M is a signal that I have to nasalize the vowel and it becomes bon. And if you can master that sound, you instantly sound so much more uh, natural in Portuguese. Okay, it's the same with the word yes, sim, S I M. Okay, it ends in an M, so I don't say the M, I have to say sim and nasalize the I, sim. So if you're saying bon, sim, you're going to sound much more professional. Professional, native, that's what I mean, much more natural. <laughs> okay, the next one people struggle with, because we've got a sh and a s in the same word, and we have to switch from one to the other, okay? So this is esta sound. Esta sound. So... In the European Portuguese pronunciation, any S that comes before a consonant is a SH. So the first part is ESTA. And then the second part, because this C has a little, what I like to call a beard, it's actually called a cedilla, <laughs> that becomes a S sound. So the second part is SAU. SAU, another nasal sound there. But people struggle with this because once you've said sh once in a word, you want to say it again, and you want to say ishta shall, ishta shall. But if you take it away, then you don't want to put it in the front. You say esta sound, esta sound. So people find it really hard to switch from one to the other when they're first learning. Ishta sound. So the best advice would be to chop that word in half and drill it separately until you're able to put them together. 
The last one, the dreaded double R in European Portuguese. Um, so I don't know how, um, your name here is Nomadic Vegan, I'm afraid I don't know what to call you um, as your first name. <laughs> I'll call you uh, Ms. Nomadic Vegan. Um, in Brazilian Portuguese, a double R will be more like a H, okay? So this first word with a double R will be carro, carro. But in European Portuguese, there's actually two variations, but I'll give you the most common one. It's this guttural H sound, okay? H, a double R. So, this is going to be carro, carro. So you need to really force the air through. H, H. It's a very, it's very similar to the R's you would use in French. Um, so, for example, Francais, it's that same sound. Okay, we call it the voiced uvula fricative. <laughs> Doesn't matter what it's called. It's hard to make. So you can just practice making that sound. H, H, and then say carro. Now the reason why you have to be really careful to say H here. Because if you don't say it, the word means something else, okay? Very similar to mersh and maish. You need to pronounce them correctly, otherwise you'll be saying different words. So, carro, and the other word on the right there is caro. Caro, which means expensive or dear, yeah? So, that's why it's really important. These are just some of the most common ones that I come across all the time. It's really important to perfect these, because not only will you find it easier to understand other people, it will be much easier for you to be understood as well. And I did do um, a free download on um, other tips like this on European Portuguese pronunciation, so if anybody wants that, I will put that in the chat box uh, by the end of the lesson. Okay, so on to, oh, skipping ahead too far. Um, oh, your name is Wendy, hi Wendy, now I can call you Wendy. <laughs> and hi to Shahid as well, who's just joined, awesome. Okay, so on to verb conjugations now. Here are some of those really tricky ones that are so similar that when you're in a conversation and you're going back through the catalogue in your head of, oh, which one's correct? These are the ones that often get confused, okay? So, this is the past of to go, or to be as well, but we'll, we'll use it to go. So, fui, I went. Fui, I went. Foi. He or she went, okay? So we've got fui and foi. So I will have a lot of students when they're practicing conversation with me say, eu foi, no sé, pero supermercado. I went to the supermarket. It's not foi, it's fui, okay? Fui. If you have others that you struggle with like this, um, pop them in the chat box and we can talk about them as well. Another one, fish and fish. So this comes from the verb fazir. Okay. First of all, we have to remember that these are all irregular verbs. So fazir in the past, often my students will want to conjugate it like a regular verb and say fazay, I did, fazay. But no, it's an irregular verb. So if I want to say I did, I did, it's Fish. Fish. And if you've seen my video on Portuguese slang, you know that that's also a word for cool. <laughs> but F I Z. So that's another pronunciation point. Don't forget that words that end in a Z need to be a sh sound in European Portuguese, okay? So fish, I did. Fish. He or she did. Il, il, fish. Il, fish, il, fish. Okay? Muito bem. Next one, oh, ver and vir. What a mess these two are. Ver is the verb to see. Vir, V-I-R, is the verb to come. So when I want to say I saw, it's on the one on the left, V-I, V. I saw, V. But then if you want to say I came, that's very confusing because it's vim, vim, v-i-m. So here we have this m sound at the end again, right, of a word. And that's my signal that I need to nasalize the vowel that goes before it. So 
V, nice and nasal, and the other one is simply V. There's no nasal sound. So I saw V, I came V. Yeah? Also got a Quizlet flashcard pack that has these irregular verbs in them and they have a recording um, with native speakers. So I will also um, put that in the, the chat box as well. I'll take a little break at the end and make sure all the links go in the chat box that I think will be useful for you. Okay, next one. Tiv and tiv, okay? So this is the past tense of to have. So it's I had, tiv, I had. And then we have tiv, he had, tiv, okay? So again, just that one little letter difference makes these really easy to get mixed up. So il tiv, I had, il tiv, okay? And the same applies for the verb ishtar, because it's formulated the same in the past. Ishtiv, I was, il ishtiv, he was, okay? So those ones always get mixed up. So try and have a go. Okay, so next one. Prepositions. These are very, very hard. Okay, so what are prepositions, first of all? Um, and these are easy to get confused. Why? What is a preposition, first of all? It expresses the relation between two things in, in a in a uh, sentence okay so the man was on the platform where was the man in relation to the platform he was on it okay so on is the preposition that we need or uh, she arrived after dinner okay uh, when did she arrive in relation to dinner after okay so the thing is is that these don't uh, correspond equally in each language okay so certain verbs will always ask for a certain preposition to go after them okay and sometimes they don't make complete sense when you are translating them okay so this one we've got here estou apaixonado com i am in love with okay in english we would say with is the is the word is the preposition that you need to go with uh, to fall in love i fell in i fall in love with i am in love with X. However, this is incorrect in Portuguese. We need to remember, estou apaixonado por. Okay, estou apaixonado por. Um, so the the preposition por would always follow apaixonar-se, the verb apaixonar-se. So uh, to give an example, estou apaixonada, because I'm a girl, estou apaixonada. Um, Pelo Jorge, with, with George, okay? <laughs> Pelo, because por and u, when it's in front of George, come together. We could look at that um, maybe another time, contractions. Do, do they drive anybody else, man? Do you struggle with contractions or is that something that you, you're you familiar with? So, estou apaixonada pelo Jorge, for example. So, estou apaixonada por. Let's see what else we have. Sonyar, so sonyar to dream, and in English you would dream about or dream of, um, but in Portuguese you dream with. Okay, so it's very confusing because uh, that do, if you translate it literally, sonyar com, well we know that com is a preposition that usually means with, right? Manteiga com sal. Uh, butter with salt, for example. Uh, so sonyar con sound feels a bit strange, okay? But that's that's the correct preposition to go with it. So, uh, for example, uh, eu estou a sonhar com uh, um dia na praia. Yeah, I'm dreaming about a day at the beach, which unfortunately none of us can have right now. Shader. This is a good one. Shader means to smell. So in English, again, we would say smells of or smells like 
So the preposition you would probably think of is de shade de whatever. Alio. It smells like garlic, okay? But what we really need is a shader a. Um, so if you saw my video the other week where we were making seafood rice at my friend's house and she said, Isto cheira a casa. Isto cheira a casa. This smells like home. Okay? So, cheira a. A is the preposition that you need. Telefone. This is a tricky one. Again, if you're on the phone, you might assume that you would be no telefone. No telefone. But actually, you are ao telefone. Estou ao telefone. I am on the phone. This might be a difference between um, European and Brazilian Portuguese, because I'm sure a lot of the prepositions I used to use in Brazil, once I moved here, was like, no, no, these have got to change. So, uh, this is um, a really good one to look out for. You're not no telefone, you're actually ao telefone. Oh, shall I take a break and have a look at the, the chat for a second before we move on to... Yeah, we're at the end of my first little section. So let's see what you got here. Yeah, Stuart says, in my opinion, vir and ver are the verbs that are most difficult to remember their conjugation. Absolutely. Um, I wish I could tell you that there was a magic formula for um, solving that, but there really isn't. You just have to learn them off by heart. Um... Somebody else says that the pronunciation does uh, depend a lot on the zone where you live in Portugal. Yeah, absolutely. It's a really good point. Um, as I was saying about the um, double R, R, there are regions in Portugal where they would roll that and say R and a R at the beginning of a, a word as well when it begins with R. So that's a really, really good thing to point out that, yes, the um, dialects and, and sounds definitely do vary. Da -da -da. Yeah, only with practice, Andre says. Yes, I agree with you, Andre. <laughs> um, perfect. So let's flip back to this then and um, look at something else that uh, people often struggle with. And it's when to, when to use the word ficar. Okay, so believe it or not, the verb ficar has five different meanings. <laughs> um, the first one, the most common one, is when we use it um, because it's, Situated, okay? So, for example, A casa fica ao lado do banco. A casa fica ao lado do banco. The house is situated next to the bank. Okay, so the fica there is situated. And you will hear this much more than you will hear estar when you're talking about where something is. On the fica, where is it? Okay, so you can also use estar, but the Portuguese use a lot, a lot, a lot, ficar as well. Number two is to stay. So ficar also means to stay. For example, vou ficar aqui. Vou ficar aqui. I'm going to stay here. Yeah? Quando vou, um, quando vou para Inglaterra, vou ficar na casa da minha mãe. When I go to England, um, I'm going to stay at my mum's house. Okay? To stay. Third one, to become. Okay? So this one I put in the past um, to show you how you would say I became or I got because um, it's a bit of a tricky irregular one. Fiquei. Fiquei. Okay. Fiquei nervosa. I got nervous. Okay. So when somebody, you know, entered the room, like when my boss entered the room, fiquei nervosa. I got nervous. Okay. So another use for ficar. Fourth one is to keep. Pod ficar com o troco. You can keep the change. Yeah? Posso ficar com isto? Can I keep this? Okay? Ficar in the sense of to keep. The last one you can use when something suits you. You can say, fica te bem. It suits you. Okay? Um... And then bonus extra use of ficar in a kind of colloquial way 
um, friends in Brazil will know this, or people who have been studying in Brazil, it also means to hook up with somebody. So <laughs> you may also hear it in that context too, but I didn't put it down as like an official one. Let me go. So that's one super common verb. What about strange uses of fazer? Okay, there are also lots of moments where the Portuguese will use the verb fazer when it's m no, maybe not so um, intuitive to non-native speakers. Okay, so one is to ask a question. Posso fazer uma pergunta? Posso fazer uma pergunta? So, fazer perguntas is to ask questions, okay? And this, you can, this is also funny when you hear um, Portuguese people speaking English, they might say, can I make a question? I would like to make a question. Because the verb fazer means to do or to make, so they're doing the exact same thing in their head that we do, okay? Which is translate things literally, and they don't always correspond. Um, to throw a party. So you would make a party in Portuguese. Vamos fazer uma festa. So again, you might notice this when people, uh, again, when a non-native uh, English speaker, who, well, when a Portuguese speaker is, is speaking English, they say, let's make a party. Why don't we make a party? Okay? Because in Portuguese, you need to use the verb fazer. To have a birthday, I can say, faço anos em outubro. Faço, I make, anos, years, em outubro, in October. I make years in October means uh, it's my birthday in October. Okay? So that one, again, maybe not super obvious, but hopefully <clears throat> useful. So that was all of those. I was now going to go on and talk to some false friends, those um, words that often trip you up because they look the same in English and Portuguese, um, but they don't always correspond. Let's just have a quick look in the um, in the comments, see what you guys are saying. So Stuart says he was speaking to someone from Lisbon who told him he spoke with an Algarvian accent um, because he spends a lot of time in Lagos. Lucky you, I love Lagos. Um, and Andre is actually from Porto and he says he has a very strong Porto accent. Hmm. Okay. I haven't spent much time in Porto. I haven't been to Porto since 2006 and I bet it's changed a lot since then. So I would love to come visit soon when all of this craziness is over. <laughs> okay. So on to the last little section before I'll move on to the phrases that I wanted to give you if you're having um, trouble keeping a conversation going and you're not understanding, but you don't want to switch to English, right? Um, that's the hardest thing and something my students say to me all the time is, I try and speak Portuguese, but everybody speaks such good English um, and they'll just sort of switch to English um, and then I feel sad. So I'm going to give you some um, uh, phrases to cope with that. I'm seeing that my... Uh, <laughs> the sun is like right on me now, but I don't think there's anything I can do about it, so you'll just have to look at me like I'm shiny. Never mind. <laughs> okay. Um, so, false friends. This first one that we have here is the word officina, right? So, you would look at that word and think, oh, obviously means office. Okay? But it actually means a, a garage or a workshop, so like somewhere where you would take your car to get fixed. Okay, so when you want to say the office, the word you're looking for is escritório. Escritório. Okay, and these are actually all taken from um, a blog post of mine, so I will um, drop that link uh, in the chat as well. <laughs> okay. Sensível. So usually when words end in a V-E-L in Portuguese, you can replace it with a B-L-E in English. So for example, horrível is horrible. Uh, terrível is terrible. So logic would dictate that sensível means sensible, right? But it doesn't it actually mean sensitive. <laughs> so this one, um, this is actually, I realised this one when a Portuguese friend was talking to me about my plants and I was like, Oh, how often should I water it? And is it okay to keep it in the direct sunlight? And she said, I don't, I don't think it's that sensible. 
But what she meant was, I don't think it's that sensitive, okay? So the plant wasn't going to be that sensitive to sun and water and stuff. So that's a good one to remember. Next, realizar. So this verb doesn't mean to realize in the sense of, oh, I just realized something. It means realize in terms of bring it to life, make it happen. Okay, so to accomplish or um, to perform something. So to achieve your objective is realizar un seul objetivo. Certo? Um, so this is another one. If you want to say, I realized, dame conta. Dame conta. I realized. Um, from the reflexive verb darse conta. Okay, so really completely different to um, realize. Pretender is the same. You would think, okay, pretender, to pretend. Um, il pretend ser astronauta. So we would think it means pretending, but it actually means intending. He intends to be an astronaut. Um, what do you intend to do? O que pretendes fazer? Okay. Um, if you want to talk about actual pretending, we would use the verb fingir. Okay, fingir. This one came up today, actually, in one of my lessons. We were talking about um, somebody who what, had gone to a demonstration, okay, or a protest. Um, so you would think that the verb is protestar, protest, okay, but actually it's the word manifest the sound. That's a protest. Manifest the sound. Um, and yeah. When I wrote this, there were lots of protests going on, and there's still protests going on, albeit um, online at the moment. Okay, I'll pause there and see if anybody has left me. Ah, why do people say Einde to their dogs? That's really good. Yeah, they're actually saying Amber. Come on, Amber, not Einde. Um, but that's a really good question. Um, when I, uh, my last video that I published was on um, how to understand when people speak too fast. Um, um, somebody put in the comments, what do they mean? Cadinho. I hear cadinho all the time. Um, and that's another really good example um, of when you're just not hearing the whole word or you're hearing the word slightly wrong. So, bocadinho is what they're saying a little bit. Yeah? Quero un bocadinho mais. Yeah, you're just not hearing the, the bo. Okay, well, I've been talking for half an hour and I was planning to only talk for half an hour. But we've just got to the bit about how to talk about when some set phrases that you can remember, memorise for when you don't understand what's going on, um, but you want to keep the conversation going. So we'll go through a few of those as well. So the obvious one, which you probably already know, is Disculpe, now percebi. Sorry, I didn't understand. So for our um, Brazilian friends watching who've been learning Brazilian Portuguese, they would usually say, um, they would use the verb entender. They would say entendi, I understood, or não entendi. But here in Portugal, it's much more common to use the verb perceber and say não percebi. And notice as well how they put it in the past. Okay, it's not I don't understand, it's I didn't understand. Okay, não percebi. So then just some really easy ones you can say. Podia repetir. Podia repetir. So again, with this R at the beginning of the word, we're using that H again, right? H. So, podia is the polite way of saying could you, followed by repeat. Podia repetir. Could you repeat? Another one that's really good, because maybe some, again, maybe you do want to keep carrying on talking to this person, but... You just need them to be aware that you're struggling to keep up with how fast they're talking. So you want to say, could you speak a little slower? Okay? Or could you speak slower? Podia falar mais devagar? Mm -hmm. You might often hear people say as well, devagarinho, because the Portuguese love putting an inu on the end of everything, don't they? Devagarinho. Podia falar mais devagarinho. So hopefully those will be helpful. What about when you don't want to switch to English? When somebody um, has been uh, chatting away and then, or even when you've just started the conversation and you're trying to practice your Portuguese and then they 
they realise that you're not Portuguese and speak to you in English. And I know it's very frustrating for people who really want to practice. So next time, why not try out some of these phrases as well and see how see how you get on. Um, desculpe. Preciso de praticar o meu português. Preciso de is I need. Okay? Preciso de praticar o meu português. I need to practice my Portuguese. Okay? Or you could say Gostava de continuar a tentar falar em português. Pode ser. This pode ser, I love, um, it's a very easy way of, of saying like, is that okay? Pode ser. Um, or you can also say to somebody as an answer, like, um, can I do this? Yeah, pode ser. Yeah? So I'll repeat that one for you. Gostava de continuar a tentar falar em português. Pode ser. I would like to continue to try and speak in English. Is that okay? Just say it all with a lovely smile and hopefully people will um, will be kind and, and carry on uh, speaking in Portuguese. The last one, throw a compliment in there. <laughs> Why not? Say, o seu inglês é muito bom. O seu inglês é muito bom. Mas, not mais, mas, mas, podia ajudar-me a treinar o meu português? Podia ajudar-me a treinar o meu português? Could you help me practice my Portuguese? Treinar, practice, improve. Um, so hopefully that will flatter the person and then ask them very politely, would, could you help me? Um, and it's something that, that they can do for you that's nice and easy. All right. Well, that's the end of my little quick fire lesson. Let's... Um, look up what other comments I missed because I know that you guys can keep up with the comments but I can't and I'm teaching. So let me see. Library is a false friend. Yes, that's a very good one. Um, library is biblioteca and bookshop is libreria. But people think that libreria um, would be, a, would be a, a thing. And then Andre says that, yeah, pode ser is like, do you mind? That's exactly it. Yeah, I was not like, Andre Nogueira, that's definitely a Portuguese name. <laughs> and you're watching this to improve your English. Okay, well, that's great. Uh, it's, a, it's a double win um, for people there then. Um, perfect. Okay, well, I am going to... Um, oh, that's my biggest frustration when I'm in Lagos. I speak Portuguese and people just respond in English. Um, you like the last one. Cool. Um, Thank you. Well, I'm glad that that was helpful. Um, somebody else says, "What's when would it be, be appropriate to use praticar and treinar? Um, I've always used treinar a lot more, but I think it's because it's much more used in, in Brazil. Um, so I would say that praticar is probably more um, common. Maybe Andre has, a, has an opinion on that. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I would say that they're, they're pretty interchangeable. Um, before I go... Um, I did want to put a couple of links in here for you that were going to be useful um, to uh, that I mentioned. So one of them was the link to my um, doo -doo -doo -doo. that's the link to my um, pronunciation download guide. Um, so if you wanted some help with the European Portuguese pronunciation uh, in particular, then that link that I just uh, post there um, is where you will find it. Um, and then I'll do the blog post that has um, the false friends on it. Um, how would I find that? <laughs> it's like uh, talkstutes.com, false friends. There we go. Perfect. So I think I did 15 in total there. So um, if you wanted to look at more of those false uh, friends. Look at this. I love it. Andrea's just jumped on and he's like helping us all out with uh, our uh, corrections as well. Muito obrigadíssimo para a aula. 
pillar hour exactly so maybe i'll talk about contractions a little bit um next time because there were like over 30 of you here so i think i should definitely do this again next week let me know in the comments if you would like me to do that um so yeah contractions are a really difficult one um to get to grips with but the reason it's pella aula is because you say thank you por and then a aula obrigado por a aula but we can't have por and a next to each other we have to smush them together to make pella obrigada pela aula okay obrigada pelo email yeah Perfect. All right. Pode ser. <laughs> All right then. Um, well, I'm glad um, that you enjoyed it, everybody. Um, I hope that you can come and find me um, either on YouTube or on Instagram. I put my Instagram handle there. It's just at Talk the Streets. Um, also, I'm also on Facebook as well, facebook.com forward slash talk the streets. Um, you can keep asking me questions um, and we can keep doing more of these. Um, hopefully it keeps you entertained and maybe I will just have to sit somewhere different so that the sun's, the sun's not in my eyes next time. Um, but other than that, it was a pleasure chatting to you all. Muito obrigado por virem. Thank you all for coming. E até a próxima. Tchau.